Who will win? OnePlus 5T or Nokia 8? Let's find out! We're gonna start off by booting up both phones. Something to take into consideration is that the Nokia 8 is already running Android Oreo, whereas the OnePlus is still running Android Nougat, even though it was released well after the Nokia. As you can see, the Nokia is just a tiny fraction faster than the OnePlus, but this could be due to Oreo, as Oreo supposedly boots up faster. Let's move on to the second test. I've installed a couple of synthetic benchmarks on both phones, one of which is 3 d Mark. As you might notice, the video has been sped up during the benchmark. The benchmark that's running now is a 3D graphics benchmark. All graphics are rendered at Quad HD resolution and then scaled back for the OnePlus as it only supports Full HD and displayed as is on the Quad HD display of the Nokia 8. And again, it's a very minor win for the Nokia. Synthetic benchmark number 2. Cheekbench Pro. Geekbench is a popular cross-platform benchmark. The tests it runs are supposedly accurate and measure mobile CPU performance. It also includes a GPU compute test, but we're starting off with the CPU tests. The test is multi-core aware, so it's testing both single-core and multi-core performance. It does this by simulating real-world tasks. Encoding, decoding, packing and unpacking, encrypting, you know, stuff like that. Well, what do you know? It's the first win for the OnePlus. Again, a very minor difference. But then again, both phones support the same Qualcomm 835 processor and have almost the same amount of RAM. This version of the Nokia has 6 and the version of the OnePlus I'm using has 8. One thing to note though is that OnePlus has been caught multiple times cheating on benchmarks. I say cheating, but OnePlus has a different view on the matter. They claim they're not cheating, just showing us the potential performance of all the phones they produce. This trick was shown to be used on both the OnePlus 3, the 3T and the 5. I haven't seen any evidence yet of the 5T using the same tricks, but who knows. Meanwhile we've moved on to the GPU compute test. This part of the benchmark seems to revolve around all kinds of graphical stuff. And it appears that the Nokia is just slightly better than the OnePlus at this. So after rounding up the synthetical GPU tests, it's time to move on to some real GPU action. We're gonna test the GPU performance of these phones using our third synthetical benchmark and Tudu. And as you may have noticed, the video has once again been sped up, because even though these videos are nice to look at, I don't want to waste your time by looking at these in real time. Aside from the GPU measurements, Antudu also gives an overall numerical score to the device it's been run on. So it's not only graphics, it's also multitasking, runtimes, the CPU, the memory, and the storage of both phones. And since the internal hardware of these phones is very alike, I don't really expect to see much of a difference. Just like we didn't in the previous benchmarks. Just as expected, when looking at the breakdown of the total score, it looks like the user experience is a little bit higher on the Nokia. Will you notice this in real life? Mm, I doubt it. Let's move on to a speed test. Both phones are connected to the same Wi-Fi network and are of course not running at the same time. Ookla speed test has been installed on both devices as I find this is a good app to test internet performance. The Ookla speed test has been run two times on both phones and I've made sure both devices use the same servers. I've also made sure to switch over to a different server for the second test. Both of these phones support dual band Wi-Fi A, B, G, N and AC. And as you can see, performance is once again very comparable. They both reach the maximum of my download limit and the Nokia comes closer to the upload limit. As we're reaching the end of this comparison, there is only one test left. As you can see, there are no apps or games in memory. One by one, I'll now open up all the apps and games that are located on the home screen of each phone. I'll measure the amount of time it takes for all of them to open up, and after that we'll see how many of those are kept in memory. The Nokia has 6, whereas the OnePlus has 8 gigs of RAM, but my guess is 6 will be enough.
and the first phone to complete the first round is the Nokia. 1 minute and 14 seconds. Also not a slouch, the OnePlus comes in at 1 minute 20 seconds. Now let's see how these phones do at keeping games and apps in memory. First one to finish the entire run is the Nokia. 1 minute and 38 seconds. Hot on the heels of the Nokia comes the OnePlus. 1 minute and 55 seconds. Both phones kept all the apps and games in memory. Having all this memory seems like a good thing. Here's a quick overview of all the results we've seen in this video. Which phone do you like most? Let me know in the comments. Well, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching and or listening. Take care.